There are literally thousands of books, TV documentaries, blog sites, and YouTube videos about the end times. They cover all kinds of things, including studying the book of Revelation, the seven-year tribulation period, interpreting the Old Testament prophecies, current events around the world, geopolitical activities in the Middle East, inventions, innovations, technologies, and even the possible identity of the Antichrist. You can find outlines, charts, graphs, graphic illustrations, and all kinds of other resources to help you understand the rapture, the church, the seven-year tribulation period, and the millennial kingdom. This is not what that is. Rarely, if anywhere, can you find any thorough teaching on what the church should expect to encounter prior to the rapture. I feel that little is being taught to prepare the church on what to expect in the next three to five years. This is what that is. The title, Perilous Times, comes from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, where the Apostle Paul tells Timothy, But understand this, in the last days perilous times shall come. Perilous times means troublesome, dangerous, hard to bear, harsh, fierce, even savage. The Apostle Paul is not warning the church about the wrath of God, but he is telling us that we should expect significant societal degeneration as the wrath of God, that is, the seven-year tribulation period, approaches. As we delve into these lessons, I want to make it clear that I am not against technology. In fact, the coming advancements in technology hold potential to bring incredible benefits and improvements to many aspects of life. However, as any powerful tool, there will be those who will misuse it. This includes, as we may discuss, figures like the Antichrist, who according to biblical prophecy will use advanced technology for evil purposes. The heart of my message through these lessons is not to instill fear or dread toward these technological advances. Rather, my objective is to equip you with awareness and understanding. Just as someone who is farsighted sees distant objects more clearly, we should view these developments with the biblical end in mind. This perspective allows us to navigate the complexities of our times with wisdom and discernment and not fear recognizing both the potential for good and the risks inherent with technological progress. So why is this important? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul gives us two reasons why it is very important that we study this. First, that we should not be caught off guard or surprised when we see things that happen, and second, how we should be living in light of our awareness of Christ's imminent and soon return. These two objectives encompass the knowledge of several things which require a biblically grounded perspective, such as Satan's damaging devices, the deceitful doctrines of false teachers, seemingly innocent but harmful theologies, how to discern between what is good and what is bad, what kind of persecution should the church expect to encounter, how to handle challenges to your beliefs and your convictions, how to develop a keen awareness of interpreting new technologies and global events in view of biblical prophecy. This will be a sort of end-time survival guide for Christians. The driving scripture that motivates all this is Romans chapter 13 verse 11, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. So why the urgency? In these latter days, I believe in the next three to five years, we will see a rebuilding of the Tower of Babel. Not using bricks and mortar, which was the modern technology of their day, but with qubits and algorithms and computer-designed engineering. However, the underlying refrain of human ambition remains the same, namely, to achieve godlike status, to ensure global unity, and to transcend human mortality. Let's look at these three things. Achieving godlike status means the ongoing human quest for greater knowledge, power, and control mirroring the ancient builder's desire for renown and achievement. 
In modern terms, this can be seen in the pursuit of technologies that enhance human capabilities beyond natural limitations, as well as efforts to harness knowledge and power that were once thought to be beyond human reach. Ensuring global unity means that the idea of global unity, while beneficial in fostering worldwide cooperation and understanding, also raises questions about the loss of cultural diversity and individuality, echoing the unified yet ultimately misguided effort of the ancient builders. Today, the internet and global communication networks have created a metaphorical global village offering unprecedented connectedness, but also presenting challenges related to cultural homogenization and digital conformity. Transcending human mortality is the pursuit of extending life, whether through medical advancements, biotechnology, or digital means, and it reflects humanity's age-old quest for the fountain of youth to overcome the limits of the human lifespan. This pursuit is reminiscent of the ancient builder's underlying theme of reaching towards the heavens to seek a form of immortality. So how is this happening? I believe that we are witnessing a rapid, if not exponential, emerging convergence in three major areas that are building this modern Tower of Babel, namely information, communication, and location. I call this new tower the Tower of Tech. These three components of information, communication, and location are not only essential for building the tower, but they are necessary for controlling the population. Information is what you know, communication is what you say, and location is where things are done. If you can control what people know, you can convince them to believe what you say and then you can tell them what to do. The recent COVID crisis is a good example. And remember, people don't do what they know, they do what they believe. So, if you can get them to believe you know what is right, they will do what you say. Let's look at these three essential components of the modern-day Tower of Tech. First, we'll look at information. The Tower of Babel was a collective endeavor based on shared knowledge and skills of the people at the time. Genesis 11 verse 4 reflects this mindset. It says, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves. The phrase, make a name for ourselves, is equivalent to making a name like God. For the new tower of tech, the internet, artificial intelligence, and access to global data represent a vast, rapidly expanding repository of human knowledge and capability, much like a digital tower reaching towards an infinite expanse of information that will make the winner of the race known throughout the whole world. Regarding communication, when the Tower of Babel was built, the people had one language and a unified form of communication which facilitated their collaboration on the Tower. In Genesis chapter 11 verse 6, God says, Behold, they are one people and they have all one language and this is only the beginning of what they will do. For the Tower of Tech, advancements in digital communication technologies like the internet, social media, mobile communication, and instant translation have created a new form of global interconnectedness, effectively creating a global language that transcends traditional linguistic barriers. Regarding location, one of the goals of building the Tower of Babel was to prevent dispersion and provide for the people to gather in one place, which was a form of managing their physical movement and location, which in turn unified the human effort against God's authority. Genesis 11 verses 8 to 9 says this, So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. For the Tower of Tech, the transformation in location technology such as electric vehicles, autonomous cars, and commercial space travel are reshaping how we move and connect globally effectively shrinking the world and allowing for unprecedented mobility and access. 
In my opinion, these technological developments are not coincidental, but are profoundly interwoven with the prophecy of the end times found in Scripture. Let's look at what we will be studying. As part of the study of events, timelines, and end times teaching that affect the church, we will also be looking at four areas of impact. First, technological advancements. How innovations in technology, especially in artificial intelligence, biotechnology, and digital communication are reshaping societies and moral landscapes and relate this back to biblical views on knowledge and wisdom. Second, globalization and cultural shifts. We will explore how globalization is leading to a blending of cultures and beliefs potentially fulfilling the biblical prophecy of a more unified world under a single system as taught in the book of Revelation and how this can be tied to Satan's effort to unify humanity in rebellion against God. Third, information overload. The deluge of information in today's world can be overwhelming and confusing, leading to challenges in discerning the truth. This aligns with 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3-4, to where people are described as turning away from the truth toward myths. Fourth, moral and ethical implications. We will address how these advancements will create moral and ethical scenarios humanity has never faced before, and how this challenges biblical morality and ethics. In our next lesson, we will be looking at the emerging technologies that are driving these changes. 